Hi everyone, I'm Mike, and this is the Sunday Art Show. Right, so what I'm going to do is... So I'll, I'll, I'll take a slightly different approach to what I did right. before, just so that you can see a bit of variety, really. But, um, so what I'll do this time is, rather than measure straight away, I'll just do a loose sketch with the, with the brush instead of the pen. And then, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So what I would do in this case, then, is I would just... Again, keeping the shapes fairly simple, and I'm deliberately holding the brush back here so I can't get too fussy. And I've got this rather uh, greeny brown which isn't quite appropriate for the horse but it might be okay for the background in a moment. And we'll just start to pick out the main shapes. Now it's a, it's a little bit of a funny uh, reference really because the mane is so long and it's getting swept about in the wind mm -hmm. that it kind of distorts the structure of the, of the animal's body. So, in terms of getting the anatomy right, I'm, I'm sort of doing my best to ignore those fluffy bits, basically, and, and using a little bit of imagination just to connect those points. But we'll see, we'll see how we go. So, having done that, and then one of the one of the ways I, I really like to work, I, I can show you again later if you if you want, um, is I like using dry brush for for drawings with the brush. Because as the paint runs out on the bristles, you get these. Um, you, you always get something different each time. Basically, you can't. If I sort of do that, I can't replicate exactly that mark again. So I, I really like drawing with with the brush. But I, I will try and create a painting here for you. Um, Okay, so there's, there's our quick outline, and just looking at it from my point of view, I, can, I think I've made a few mistakes already. What I can typically do if I was at home is I come back here and think, is that reasonably proportioned? It doesn't look quite so bad from here, so, so I think it's, it's not too bad. So what I would do next is, sticking with the same brush, just take most of the paint off of the, off of the bristles. And because it's a sort of an orangey brown animal, um, let's take some cadmium red, and I'll just soften that a bit by mixing it in with the kind of muddy brown that I had before. And I'll go around once again, just like I did with the cow earlier, but this time being a bit more careful. And so, so the way the reason the quick sketch works as a kind of guide, the idea this line may not be right. But it's much easier for me to judge whether it's wrong that way or that way because I've got a mark there and just try and get it completely right the first time. You know? mm -hmm. um, and of course, the more you practice, the, you know, the closer you, you get to getting it right in general. So I can now see, having put that down, that the, horse, the front of the horse's head is actually coming down at a steeper angle. And the line of the jaw there, that, that was okay, I think. And he's got this... A uh, bit of hair being blown out. There's a little bit of an ear p poking through there. And then the mane kind of comes along and, and dips down at a funny angle. Comes down here. It's being swept up in the wind there. And then at that stage, I'd, I'll probably stop and just measure again, just to make sure I'm not a million miles away. So what I'm doing is I've just measured the length of the head compared to the distance from the front of the head to the base of the neck. And they appear to be about the same in the photo. So when it comes to measuring, and I've got them more or less the same on the drawing, so that's not too bad. But when it comes to measuring, the idea is not to be you know, you don't have to be hyper strict with yourself, but you're just trying to make sure that um, the head isn't twice as long as it should be, you know? Because uh, often the things we get slightly wrong is what, is what gives our drawings character and makes them unique. Other, you know, otherwise, um, yeah, we'd all be doing exactly the same, or aiming to do exactly the same thing. So in the back, so I had a little bit too much of a, a curve to the back. It's, it's straighter than I had it. Then there's a slight raise when we come to the hindquarters, and then they actually come down at an angle there. Oh, 
that leg isn't too bad. But I've, I've shown far too much of the leg that is actually much more hidden by the foreleg. So the hoof of the left foreleg is actually comes to an end there. And we've got the belly, which wasn't too bad. And then another, another good tip is if, because I'm fairly happy with those legs, what I can do is, is if I hold my brush, uh, my brush horizontal and line it up with the hock, then I can see that it, it's, in this case, it's actually pretty much exactly level with that knee. knee. Yeah, okay, cool. So, <laughs> it's like, um, like the two Ronnies, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, so, 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 that, so that I managed to sight fairly well. And then the angle of this isn't too bad. Uh, but the, the hoof there is a little bit lower than this one, so that's okay. So that's not too, that, that rear leg isn't too bad, but it needs to be a little bit chunkier above the hock there. And the back end curves a bit more. And then there's a bit more of a gap than I had. And that, this leg is actually way, way further back than I had it, I now realize. And then the tail comes all the way to the ground. Okay, so we've, we've got our outline of our horse. And then having done that, I'm going to stick with the same colour. I'm going to, but I'm going to work dark to light this time, I think. Or, um, yeah, let's, let's do that, because then that shows you something different. So, so what I'll do is I've still got that, um, that kind of on a John's brush, but we've got some quite dark shadows there, so I'll just mix in a load of uh, burnt amber. And then we'll just check the colour. I think that's, that's not, that's certainly, worth a, certainly worth a go. So I'm just, I've put some burnt amber on there with that kind of light energy brown. And again, it's the same, it's the same with colours. You don't have to match it exactly straight away. It's just a starting point, and if you end up with something you like, then you can stop. But with acrylic, if, if it's wrong, you can just change the colour, you know, so... And maybe show some of that underlayer showing through, so that you get a, you know get a nice mix of colours. So what I'll do now, instead of starting with the midtone like I did with the cow, I'm going to squint at this stage and put in the regions of shadow, taking care to you know use my brush strokes to help describe form where I can. But in addition. Um, I'm you know, noting quite carefully the shapes of the dark areas. So, oops, so I went a bit wild there with the, with the, the paint, so I'll just use the finger there to take some of that off. So we've got the underside of the belly is in shadow. There's a little bit of a cast shadow on that on the inside of that rear leg, and another one down here, and there's a bit of shadow there as well. Okay, now having done that, so this is kind of a demo of, uh, regarding what you were you were asking earlier. So I put that paint down. What if I just want to go over the top of that? You know, is is it going to be a problem? Well, I, to be honest, I would probably let it dry normally a bit more than I have. So. So the answer is, yes, it may be a problem, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, whoops, dripping paint over. Let's get a different brush. So what I'll do now is go over everything I've done, but fairly lightly. So I'm barely letting the brush skim the paper, really. Now, this region of the neck is covered by the white mane, but I'm just going to put in some colour just to kill the, the white, and we'll come back and do the mane later. And my hope is that when, so you can see first of all the paint, the underlying paint starting to go, it started to move there because that was still wet. But in general, it, it's only been drying for a couple of minutes and I'm coating over it without too much difficulty at all. And my hope is that when this overlayer, overcoat dries back, um, you'll be able to see even more than we are at the moment some of those underlying shadows. So 
So again, even though I'm doing this quite simply, I am keeping in mind the direction of, of my brush strokes. And even though this part of the leg, the foreleg here, is white pretty much, um, again, I'll coat, I'll coat that as well. And one of the things I meant to mention earlier, which I haven't done today for you, is I will quite often work by, say, doing this stage with conventional acrylics. And then um, the reason for that is, as, as I showed you earlier, once the conventional acrylic is dry, once that underpainting is dry, then it's completely waterproof. And so the dry acrylic is, is smooth and it provi provides a wonderful surface to paint the interactives on top of. It's lovely and slippery, so you can, you can work really quickly. But in addition, if you kind of mess it up the painting with your interactives, you can just wet it and scrape it off with a paper towel, and you've still got your underpainting preserved, so you, you don't risk losing your work. Okay, so you I'm sorry. You you can, but what will happen is they won't be interactive anymore, yeah. so they'll just work like normal acrylic. Okay. Yeah. So um, there's no harm in doing that, but but you can you can't respray because otherwise mm -hmm. I think um, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Because you could buy normal acrylic, which I think is, yeah. I, don't know if, I don't know if these are more expensive or not actually. If they are more expensive, they certainly go further because there's less waste. You need so little paint, you know, you know, to to get what you want. That um, I, th I think they probably work out a bit cheaper in the long run. Anyway, so before what I'm going to do next is pop in a uh, cast shadow. So, so there's quite a strong cast shadow here. So the temptation would be uh, to you know perhaps use black or just a very dark brown. But even even within shadows, there are colours. So Generally speaking, I would say it's better to go brighter and more vibrant with your shadow colour, at least initially. And then, because you could always darken it later, or darken part of it. And again, that helps to, to create a more convincing reality. If you have modulations of colour and tone within, within the, your shadows, then you know, that's much closer to real life than, than just having a solid block of black or dark blue. So it's a, it's a little bit of an odd cast shadow because the, the horse is on quite uneven ground. But nevertheless, that starts to, to bring, bring him to life. So next up, what I'll do is um, <coughs> pop in a bit of a, a, even though it's a brown background, I'm just going to put in a little bit of a light green background. Again, we can work wet in wet. If I perhaps hold the brush this way, you can see I just get these little bursts of brown coming through. And of course, you can do that with any, any colour you like. And it's just a nice way to quickly cover an area, but get some interesting colour mixing. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put you know, yellow down one edge and red down another, and then a, a, a central colour, so you've got three colours going in. But really, I just want to sort of cover the, cover the white paper at this point. That's all I'm attempting to do. So that shadow's bled a little bit into the, into the grass colour, but that, that's okay at this stage. <coughs> what we'll do now is, I, what I'll try and do is create a sense of fluffiness for you on the, on the animal. And what I'm going to do now is just take some of the pure yellow along one, one edge of my brush again there. And then my hope is if I spray the surface of the painting with water and change the way I'm working my, my brush, so this this will be a sort of a two or three step process probably, but I'm starting to create a little bit of texture now. I kind of just so I'm definitely not trying to draw every individual hair. That, that would be a lifetime's work. But you can see that by working wet in wet, you can begin to suggest the, the tether. Yeah, so you're starting to look a little bit more textured and fluffy on the surface rather than just a completely smooth coat. And then what we can do is start to add some highlights in, but again, we'll be careful about the direction of the marks we make with our highlights. And generally speaking, 
put the paint down a little bit thicker so it's less transparent, but it does depend on the type of effect you want to create. Just realised my background is dripping through my horse, which wasn't <laughs> which wasn't my intention, but there we go. So what you can do is, even if the underlying colour is wet, if you put the paint on thickly, you can get a really nicely well-defined shape of highlight. Perhaps that's what you want to do here, for example. But if you apply it a little bit more thinly, then you can get the wet and wet mixing. And so, you know, very quickly and easily, you can create a range of different marks to, to describe highlights, as opposed to just... Um, You know, one, one single type of mark making, which, which again, you know, is, is closer to reality because, uh, ev you know, everything on an animal is, is generally held at a different angle, so it's going to catch the light differently. Uh, the, the legs, which are near the grass, are going to have more green reflected onto them, and so on. And of course, we mentioned dry brush earlier. There's no reason why you can't use dry brush at, at this stage of the painting to create a layered effect. 